Hello, my name is Dr. Seema Shah Fairbank, and in this video I will cover critical depth and specific energy for open channels. After watching this video, first you'll be able to define the critical depth within open channels based on the Froude number. You'll be able to define and calculate the specific energy within open channels. And third, define the flow regime of the open channel. The Froude number, FR, is a dimensionless number used to describe the flow behavior. It is defined as the ratio of the flow inertia to gravitational forces. In open channel hydraulics, the Froude number is used to define the flow regime of an open channel. The Froude number is equal to the velocity divided by the square root of gravity times the hydraulic depth, where the hydraulic depth is the cross-sectional area divided by the top width. When the Froude number is equal to 1, the flow is considered critical, and the corresponding depth is defined as critical depth. When the Froude number is less than 1, the flow regime is defined as supercritical, and the corresponding depth is greater than the critical depth. And finally, when the Froude number is greater than 1, the flow regime is defined as supercritical, and the corresponding depth is less than the critical depth. It should be noted that critical depth is not stable and will not occur for extended periods of time within an open channel. With that being said, when flow depths are less than when flow depths are less than critical, the velocity is high, resulting in fast flow velocities, versus when flow depths are greater than critical, the velocity within the channel is lower, resulting in slower flow velocity. Now let's talk about how to determine crib critical depth for common channel types, such as a rectangular channel. For rectangular channels, the following derivation will assist in determining the critical depth. The Froude number is equal to the velocity divided by the square root of gravity times the cross-sectional area divided by the top width. Since velocity is flow rate divided by area, we can rewrite the Froude number equation where the Froude number is equal to the flow rate divided by the square root of gravity times the area cubed divided by the top width. If we set the Froude number to 1, the area for the rectangular channel is base width times critical depth, dc, and the top width of the channel is the base width. By algebraically rearranging the equation, and substituting the area and the top width. The equation can be further simplified as the flow rate squared is equal to gravity times the base width squared divided by dc cubed. If we isolate the critical depth, critical depth dc is equal to the cube root of the flow rate squared divided by gravity times the base width squared. It should be noted that the unit discharge, little q, is equal to the flow rate divided by the base width. So we can further simplify the critical depth as the cube root of the unit discharge squared divided by gravity. As you can recall from prior video, the total energy within an open channel includes the summation of the elevation head C, the water surface D, and the velocity head V squared divided by 2G. The difference between the energies at point 1 and point 2 is the friction head, HF. Note that the bed slope of the channel is determined based on the change in the elevation head. The water surface slope of the channel or the hydraulic grade line is based on the difference between the elevation and the water surface depth. And the friction slope, or the energy grade line, is determined by the change in the elevation head, velocity head, and water surface depth. The overall energy between point one and point two can be determining by summing 
the elevation head, the water surface depth, and the velocity head at point one, and setting that equal to the elevation head, the water surface depth, the velocity head at point two, plus the friction head. The specific energy, on the other hand, is used in channels is based on only the water surface depth and the velocity head. The specific energy excludes the elevation head. A specific energy diagram can be sketched to help illustrate this point. The y-axis includes the flow depth, while the x-axis includes the specific energy. When the specific energy is equal to the flow depth, we have no velocity head, and, the, and a 45 degree line can be drawn on our diagram. For a specific flow rate or unit discharge, the specific energy curve is a parabol parabolic shape, which never reaches the 45 degree line or the x-axis. The minimum energy will occur at what we defined as critical depth. The distance from the y-axis to the 45 degree line is the flow depth, and the distance from the 45 degree line to the specific energy curve is the velocity head. To note, the greater the flow depth is from critical depth, the lower the velocities will be, resulting in subcritical flow. While when depths of flow are less than critical, the velocities within the channel will be much higher, resulting in supercritical flow. For all energies greater than the minimum energy, there are two possible depths. One depth is associated with subcritical flow, and the other is supercritical flow. These depths are alternative depths. I hope this video helps you better understand critical depth shows you how you can calculate critical depth based on the fruit number, redefines energy, and shows you specific energy within an open channel. And based on both the critical depth and the specific energy, you can clearly understand whether a channel is supercritical, subcritical, or critical.